Hi everybody, Barnaby here from Electric Car Converts. Um, now you may be thinking we've already seen this car, you've already done a video on it, but it is in fact different. Um, this is a 1972 Series 3 Land Rover, um, different to the 1969 Series 2A that we've also got in the workshop at the moment. Um, obviously it's exactly the same colour, looks pretty much the same apart from the hard top, um, but the keen Land Rover enthusiasts or the keen eye amongst you will know that the grille is different. They went to plastic in, in the Series 3. Um, wing mirrors are different. They'd be here if they were a Series 2 or a Series 2A. Um, but other than that, not a lot different. Um, this car is actually a petrol, um, or at the moment anyway, so it's a two and a quarter litre petrol engine, which I must say is absolutely beautiful. Um, this is a very sweet car um, that we've actually sourced for a client. Um, so a client has come to us and said, look, I want an electric Land Rover. What can you recommend? What do I need? Um, find it for me um, and give it to me when it's electric. So the client's never seen it. Um, we had a couple requirements to fulfill, which we have pretty much done so now. Um, so to talk you through the vehicle, um, it's had a very extensive rebuild and, and refurbishment before getting to us. Um, now that's really important because we don't want to personally do the restoration um, and the cosmetic stuff. We're electric specialists but we've had a team of restoration and, and Land Rover specialists working on this vehicle for us um, before getting it delivered here. So things like the bulkhead have been sorted out because that's a, that's a high, there's a lot of rust was going on in there. So as you can see, that's got a little bit different paint. Um, so that's been restored. The pillars have been redone, re-welded, and it's been painted. The wheels are refurbed. It's got new tires on it. It's got new parabolic springs on it, um, new shocks all around. Um, and then to, when it gets really interesting, this car has had a complete gearbox rebuild. Um, it's had a new overdrive fitted to it, um, new rear prop shaft, just so that drivetrain is absolutely fantastic um, and really going to be up to the electric power that we're putting in it. Treacle's got us a nice little bit of tree. Thanks, Treacle. Coming around to the back, um, another, another um, requirement of the client was to be able to tow a small boat. Um, so that we've got a little tow bar installed there. We've got these brand new original Land Rover mud flaps, which sounds like, you know, an easy thing. That is not an easy thing to come by or a cheap thing to come by. Let's go into the back here. Safari spec on this vehicle means that it's got elephant hide back seats. Lovely brand new spare wheel. That's never even spun a rotation in its life. Coming down to the right hand side of the vehicle. Which is pretty cool. Um, obviously, it's got a locked filler cap. Anyone can come and get the petrol out of this one. Obviously, remember it's a petrol, don't put it in your diesel car. Um, but the charge socket, the Type 2, is going to go into there. So that looks really nice on the Series 2A that we've done already. And this is the interior, so this is where things really start getting nice. Um, obviously, original Land Rover mats, these brand new, brand new Exmoor trim seats and a couple of little mod cons um, for the vehicle. So USB charging in there. Um, look at these dials. They're all looking really good, really, really smart. Um, and a sound system here. So Sony sound system with some nice JBL speakers in the back that we've already had installed. We don't do it, but we um, contract, contract other firms in the local area to do that kind of thing for us. So there she is, an absolute beauty. We've had all that done and it's finally arrived back with us now. Um, I must say I absolutely love this car. Um, I think I'd quite like it for myself, but what can you do? Before it goes to the client, the roof will be taken off um, and the door tops probably taken off as well. Um, now, the reason for this is because of the story of this car. This car, although it's currently in Safari spec, as it was originally, as you can see by this funny thing on the roof um, and a couple of other bits and bobs, which I'll show you later. Um, but this car is going to Portugal. Um, so it's gonna be at the, at the owner's, on the owner's private house. Um, they're gonna use it to go into town, to the beach to go for a surf. So the whole no roof series three vibe works really well. But this specific place in the Algarve in Portugal is really pushing electric vehicles. Um, it's the done thing, it's the cool thing to do. Um, so rather than buying yourself a Renault Zoe or a, you know, a, a little Nissan something or other, 
why not do a la get a Land Rover converted? It's cheaper to get it converted than it is to buy a new one, a, a new um, electric car off the shelf. A lot better for the environment, a lot cooler, and I really think it's going to suit the Portuguese beach look. So now that I've been through all the key points of this vehicle, the work it's already had done, um, let's talk about what will actually happen in the electric conversion. So we're going to be putting the same system and the same pack into this as we did our previous Defender and the Series 2A that's in at the minute. Um, so that's a Hyper 9 motor attached to the original gearbox um, with custom designed adapter plates and coupling systems to allow for that kind of thing. That motor will be powered by five Tesla Model S batteries, um, which are actually already in the workshop. They're already here. Um, that will give it a battery pack of 26 and a half kilowatt hours. Um, that will all sit up in the front here. Um, so we're going to have the five batteries lined up, Hyper 9 mounted underneath them, and then all the bits and bobs around that. So the battery management system, the charging system, the DC-DC converter, um, various control units um, and, and wiring systems, including the 12 volt system. We're going to get as much as we can under the bonnet, but the charger in this car will go under one of the seats um and there's also space obviously where the where the fuel tank will come out and where the exhaust all comes out so there's a lot of space for, for parts in this car even though it is perhaps smaller than than defenders that we've worked on uh previously in our, in our previous builds um so this will have the motor will have 120 horsepower now we're not going to run this car at 120 horsepower mostly because of the use case um it's only going to be used for pottering around town we might as well dial that back a little bit. That will save the gearbox. Um, that will save, you know, things like the brake suspension from doing 0 to 60 quicker than this thing has ever done it or any Land Rover of this era has ever done it in its life. Um, so we'll dial that down maybe to 80, 90, 100 horsepower, depending on what the client wants, how the client feels about it. We're obviously going to leave the original gearbox in there. Most of the time, this car will be driven around in third, um, but we may ask the client to shift into fourth if they go in onto a dual carriageway or a motorway, for example. Um, one final thing that I, that I love about this car is that it's already been named by the family that it's going to. Um, they've called her Evie, which I think is lovely because obviously EV, EV. So we're going to get that on, on a nice badge on the back um, for the client. So, so the EV can drive around safe and sound, electrically, not a care in the world, not worrying about the environment. Um, in Portugal, so I'll be sad to see you go, Evie. But let's uh, let's go and let's go and play. <laughs> 